Let me just tell you just a little bit about myself and how I got into the energy business. Um, my entire dream and career has been to be a, in space from childhood, uh, from the time that we decided to, uh, uh, you know, when President Kennedy said we're going to go to the moon and come back safely. And uh, I started in er, uh, 1980 working in the space program uh, supporting uh, NASA. Uh, and I've been in it for uh, 37 years. And so in 1994, I started to open my own company. Uh, just two of us in my basement, again, space-related. Uh, the company called SGT. And today we are the second largest um, services provider to uh, NASA, as well as many other government agencies. So uh, when astronauts from space talk to ground and say, hey, Houston, we have a problem, uh, they talk to SGT employees. So uh, 24 by 7, we uh, support uh, a space program on our astronauts. So I'm incredibly proud to be part of that. So um, a lot of time I'm asked this question, how does a space cadet get involved in energy? <laughs> um, one of my projects that uh, I'm involved in many nonprofits that I have is a school in Africa, in Kinshasa. Uh, Kinshasa is the capital of uh, DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo. And I have about 700 kids. And Kinshasa is one of the poorest capitals in the world. And my school is one of the poorest neighborhoods. And uh, so we started that school. We have 700 kids. Uh, 350 come in the morning. And uh, they go to class. And we feed everyone. Uh, and they leave. Another 350 come in. They eat. And they go to class in the afternoon. And so. Um, uh, I've been, I was there last year, and when you get there, you, you see that when you don't have power, uh, you don't have electricity, you don't have clean water. When you don't have clean water, you don't have good health. When you don't have power, you don't have education. And in fact, there are some studies that they've done where they have sort of uh, plotted uh, power to uh, prosperity and education and health. And, and so I also have another um, uh, nonprofit in south of France, uh, a little nicer place. Um, there's a spiritual retreat center. And uh, I was, this is a true story. I was uh, in a, a meditation called Zero Point, where you try to clear your thoughts, and, uh, which is not that easy if you ever tried, because our mind is running 1,000 miles an hour and uh, sort of get inspiration. And I really got this inspiration that we need to do something for our planet. And so um, right after that, I came back. And uh, by the way, not being in energy business in any way, shape, or form at all prior to that. And I said, we got to do something. And uh, one of the things that uh, part of my NASA experience we supported, uh, I don't know if any of you know Jim Hansen. Uh, it was one of the guests. So uh, there's a place in New York called uh, GIS, or Goddard Institute for Space Studies, where Jim Hansen was the director. And my company supported that program for 10 years. And the whole study was about the climate change and scientifically through satellite experiments, understanding uh, you know, scientifically how our environment is changing and so on and so forth. So I supported that for a long time. So it's like, what can we do? to make a difference, not only for our country, but for our planet. Because at the end of the day, this is our home. David said that we're all roommates. We're all sharing this planet. In fact, I've, sh I've talked about this story with other people that if one day we're able to, some, uh, some aliens are traveled, uh, able to travel to our planet, and from you know, distant looks at us, and look at how we operate every day and how we behave, they would say we're barbarians. <laughs> and the reason they would say we're barbarian is how we become socially tribal uh, in many different ways and how we are blindly, okay, walking to the edge of the cliff and not recognizing it, right? A lot of people say, well, we are killing our planet. The planet will survive after us. We're killing ourselves. If we don't do something, we are 
really at the point of uh, no return. So we got to do something. So all of that got me into what do I do? And I started really looking at hydrogen as as an energy solution, H2O, right? Uh, there's m more, uh, you know, you can, uh, of course, get hydrogen from the water. But soon I came to this sort of the practicality point of view that uh, we're not ready for hydrogen economy, right? Uh, some of you may not know this, but today, only 5% of the power on the planet, I believe, is provided by all the renewables. And our population is going to grow to be 10 billion people. So the question is, with all the stuff that's happening, the climate change, and everything else that's going on, how are we going to make a dent in terms of where we're going? And, and so um, I came up with four founding principles, CSSA. I wanted to have a solution that is clean and have no sort of emission, carbon or any other sort. That's the C. I want to have a solution that is safe, so clean, safe. I wanted to have a solution that is secure, and I wanted to have a solution that is affordable. So you all have heard about horrible stories about nuclear, whether it's uh, Fukushima or Three Mile Island or, or um, other places. Chernobyl, right? And one thing, as I got to, uh, uh, to study and realize, is that, um, that actually the material that is in nuclear, the uranium, uh, I don't know if any of you know where is the origin of those materials. If any of you know, raise your hand. So the original, or, uh, the, the, the origin of the uranium actually is not from this planet is as a result of supernovas. When the planets exploded many, many years ago, that material came to Earth, and that's where it came from. And that's why they have incredible amount of energy density, right? So um, you got all those bad nuclear stuff. You wanted to come up with a solution that is really a sort of a power source for hydrogen. I'm all for renewables. I'm all for solar, for wind, all the other renewables. But the thing is, we got to have this bridge from where we are to where we're going, where we're not killing ourselves and killing our planet. And that's why I came up to this clean nuclear solution. So what we come up with is a technology. Uh, our, our system is based on pebble bed reactors. So pebbles are this sort of tennis ball sized balls. And they are going inside our reactor. And actually, this is a proven technology, at least for 30, 40 years, started with Germans, and then uh, uh, United States, and later uh, Japan, and recently in China, uh, where uh, when you create this kind of reaction, when it reaches a certain temperature, it will turn itself off. So in the other words, it will never, ever go super critical, or it will never have a meltdown situation. Uh, and that's why we said it's 100% safe, or uh, in the other words, it's meltdown proof. Uh, and also, it, it's uh, uh, very much proliferation resistant, so it can't be used for ill purposes. So we've we sort of developed this technology as a next generation technology. As I said, it's uh, a very high technology level, and it's proven technology. Uh, we've designed this system with that early stages of this, and we hope that by 2025, uh, we will have this system in ground. I, was, I should say that so far, uh, by the end of this year, I've put in $40 million of my own money into this project uh, to make it a reality. And uh, it will take a lot more money to get there, but I'm committed to uh, make it happen. Thank you so much. Ooh.